Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about Season 2, Episode 9, the penultimate episode of Season 2 of Hulu's Only Murders in the Building, entitled Sparring Partners. The title's pretty obvious, it comes from the scene, which is a great scene by the way, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, uh, where Mabel and Detective Kreps kind of like hash it out and put everything out on the table. Well, not everything. Mabel puts everything out on the table, but... Uh, Detective Krebs doesn't, but we do learn a lot in that scene. But I don't want to spend a ton of time kind of like, not to say that I BS to start the videos, but I kind of want to dive into what we learned this week right away because I feel like I learned a lot. I feel like I figured out a lot and I still feel like I have no earthly fucking clue <laughs> of, of who killed Bunny and why. So I'm going to start talk. I'm going to start with Krebs. Um... He narrates a lot of this episode. He opens the episode. We see it in like a, a kind of like a flashback that's playing over his narration. Uh, he talks about, you know, how much money the NYPD makes versus how much he gets paid. It's something like, it's, I think he says something like 80 something grand before, you know, all, all everything. So he's not seeing a lot of money. So he takes odd jobs in other places. He, uh, takes side jobs like security guard at Coney Island. Uh, he works at this boxing gym and Mabel confronts him there. And Mabel puts, like I said, she puts everything out on the table. Like she tells him everything that she knows. She flatly accuses him of being the killer and setting her up, all of which he denies. But I love this scene because I thought Michael Rappaport did a really good job here showing insecurity and vulnerability. And when I say vulnerability, I don't mean like opening up but showing that he is vulnerable to manipulation, I think would be the best way to put it. He seems like someone who is insecure and you can have a strong party, like someone like, oh, um, I don't know, Cindy Canning, uh, Canning come along and kind of like easily influence you. A couple of, you know, bats of the eyelashes and a smile from, from Tina Fey. And you're just like, yeah, sure. I'll do whatever you want. And but he also makes some great points, too, about Mabel's generation, which I thought were good. Like, you all, everybody told you you could be whatever you want. And you, now you're out here making TikToks and these stupid fucking podcasts. And I thought it was actually a pretty entertaining point. But a lot of the emotion he showed in that scene, you know, like the, the resentment toward her generation, which is clearly born out of what Cinda is probably telling him. Because, again, he's so... Uh, easily influenced and 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 vulnerable and in intimidated that she's probably just like, yeah, all these fake podcasts and all these shitty podcasters, they don't know what they're doing. I know what I'm doing. He's like, yeah, yeah, because he's probably, she he probably lets her walk all over him. You know, he thinks, you know, I'm, I'm seeing the smartest girl in the world. Like, okay, uh, yeah. Like, you could tell that she's kind of like, it was what I said last week. I said that, you know, that Kreps, I was like, I don't believe that Kreps did this murder by himself if he did it. He had an accomplice, someone who's smarter than him. And that's exactly uh, what I think the show is trying to tell us is that Cinda is involved in this in some sort of way, maybe pushed him to assist or even kind of just uh, help with giving her something to talk about on her podcast. Because it's kind of clear, and I'm going to get to this in a little bit, that she's someone who likes to manufacture uh, information or topics for her podcast. So... Uh, lots learned of that scene. I really like that. Um, you know, like I mentioned, he not only seems to be dating her, but he also seems to be helping her manifest podcast episodes. Uh, we see him go into an evidence room. He takes a, 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 a hair that has Becky, what was her name? Becky Butler, I believe. Uh, I know I wrote it down in here somewhere. Uh, does it matter? I'm pretty sure it's Becky Butler, but I, I don't know. I, I get weird about these name things, but um, yeah, we'll just say it's Becky, Becky Butler. I'm sorry, but, uh, we see him going there. He gets a, a hair, which, why would she have a strand of hair in an evidence room anyway? Maybe it was given because they thought she was missing already. But what I picked up from it is that he planted that hair to make someone go, oh, she's missing. She ran off. And at the end of the day, I guess we're supposed to infer that Poppy was, I don't know, kidnapped by Cinda. To some, to some effect, 
or at the very least, Cinda is such an intimidating and demanding and commanding person that she essentially bullied Poppy into not admitting who she was and that she was fine or going home or anything like that. Probably because Poppy respects uh, Cinda's success and her uh, and her demeanor. But I think that's what we're supposed to glean from this is that Kreps uh, was used by Cinda Canning, Canning to, uh, I, I'm struggling with not calling her Sarah Canning, uh, is was manipulated by her to essentially aid in painting this picture that Becky was missing. And now she's running around as Poppy along with Cinda and that w and she manipulated Kreps into helping with that. It's an interesting twist, but I think it's a strange twist uh, to have in the second to last episode, especially because it, it doesn't really seem to tie into who killed Bunny. But I have a thought on that too, because I'm wondering if Poppy is related to Bunny in some way. And again, I don't know how we tie this into who killed Bunny and why, which is the thing that's bothering me. It's like, I feel like I figured out a lot of stuff that the show is going to tell us next week, except the important thing of who, who killed Bunny and why. But I don't know. I wonder if she's related just because, I mean, they look similar with the glasses. Poppy and Bunny are similar, similarly structured names. Um, but I, I, I can't wrap my head around how that would tie in with Bunny's murder or uh, what that would have to do with why anyone would set up the uh, set up our crew, the Omit B podcasters. Uh, let's see. So another thing we learned is that Teddy actually is Will's biological father. And we learned that Oliver has no intention of telling anyone else about that. You know, when he lied to Charles about it, I totally bought it. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's good. I was, a little, I was a little concerned that Will wouldn't be his kid because I knew that would really upset him. And he said, you know, and he volunteered the information. Like, yeah, I found out, got the DNA results. I found, found the, I was able to read them since we got our power back. And turns out he's my kid. Yay. And it just so happens that I'm part Greek, Greekish, <laughs> like Irish. I thought that was a great line. Uh, but yeah, it turns out that he was lying and he tells Will the same thing. But we find out in a conversation with Teddy that um, Teddy actually is the father. And a great elevator scene with them fighting and then how we're getting on. And he asked him not to tell anyone else. And he said he asked the same of his wife. So, or ex-wife, I'm guessing, ex-wife. Uh, but yeah, so the reason I brought that up, because again, what does that have to do with Bunny? What does that have to do with Bunny? There's a very clear theme here about fatherhood and how different uh, different types of fathers can have impacts on their kids and those kids can then grow up to show certain personality traits that were brought about by how they were raised by their father. So we got the Oliver, Will, and Teddy situation. So Oliver's got a father situation. He's dealing with the fact that his son, that well, he, the person he thought his son, who he's raised as his son, is not actually his son, and that somebody who... Uh, I, don't, I don't think Oliver considers Teddy to be a mortal enemy, but I think Teddy might consider Oliver to be that. Uh, but he, he finds out that his, his Teddy is, uh, is actually Will's father. And that has a lot that I'm sure that's going to be something that we're probably going to see play out a little bit next week. Probably not. I feel like there's a lot to cover in the final episode, but the idea of, you know, how Oliver pushed Will into, into the theater and all this, so all these sorts of things that he did under the pretense that this was his kid and now he knows he's not. So I think we'll see some follow-up from that, especially if we get a season three. Um, we've got Charles and his father. We've got the, that that whole situation. Uh, how Charles looked at his father is kind of like a jerk, but then he has this conversation with, uh, for right now, we'll call her Shirley MacLaine's character. And he sees his father in a different light. And we saw the scene earlier where his father was, you know, going to these auditions, but he was also seeing his side pieces. Like... We have this whole thing. We know, I'm not going to go into great detail just yet, but we know that Charles has issues with his father. And we know we know his father is the subject of the painting, all this kind of stuff. So we have that. And then we have Mabel's father and how she was coping with, as an adult, how she's coping with how she pushed down what was happening to him when he was dying. So like all three of them have some sort of father issues. With Oliver, it's him being a father. And then with Charles and Mabel, it's their fathers. But like... What does that got to do with Bunny? <laughs> Who killed Bunny and why? What does that have to do with anything? Um, I also thought uh, 
real quick, it was a great scene. I, I guess I'll just talk about this now. Shirley MacLaine's character, it's revealed that she is not Leonora Folger and that Leonora Folger is still in a, I'm guessing, a nursing home and has not left. Uh, she looked pretty old. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, she's, I'm guessing, not all there, all together. And that uh, Shirley MacLaine's character is actually Rose Cooper, the artist who painted the picture and was having an affair with Charles' father. And two notes on that. One, I love the, the reason I brought this up is I, I thought uh, that scene between Rose and Charles was a great scene. Like that, like I mentioned, the whole idea of her kind of like changing the perception that he had of his father and seeing that painting that was underneath uh, the, that was made of him and his, well, him and Charles and his father. I thought that was a great, great scene. And I thought that was a great scene for uh, Steve Martin, who we normally don't see go to those kind of levels. So that was a great scene. Uh, I'm going to come back to that a little bit. So like I said, I don't know how we tie the father theme into the murder. Um, I also don't know how to tie this Cinda Kreps poppy thing into it either. And I don't know how to connect those two things to each other. So like, it's like, I've got, I'm pretty stumped, but it's like, I feel like I figured out, like I figured out the father theme, right? That there's got to be some sort of father thing related here. Because why put it in there? You got the whole thing with Teddy and, and Theo. Like, there's this whole father theme that runs through this whole season. But our murder victim is a woman, and <laughs> it appears to have nothing to do with fathers. At least it appears that way. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, I figured that out. Uh, the the Cinder Kreps, and if, if Poppy ends up being related to Bunny somehow, I can't, I can't, can I pat myself on the back? Because I don't know what that would have to do with anything. And I feel like any predictions I make before the final episode kind of don't count. Like I can't really pat myself on the back for watching nine full episodes <laughs> and be like, I figured this out. Like, you didn't figure out shit. <laughs> but um, let's see. So I mentioned that we learned that Shirley MacLaine is Rose Cooper, the artist who made the painting. Um, she also says that someone was... Uh, poking around asking her questions. And she says, you know, dark hair, glasses, and Charles goes, Cinda Canning, which makes sense because we've just seen at that point, we were already piecing together that she was involved with Kreps somehow. And we were already in our minds thinking that Kreps and Cinda were somehow working as a team and involved in all this nefarious behavior. But now I'm starting to wonder, was it Poppy that was coming around and not Cinda? Cause sure, surely Rose wouldn't know. She didn't give this person an age. He said it was Cinda. And even if even then, do you think she's going to go, oh, no, it was a Cinda Canning. That's the famous podcaster. It was someone else. She doesn't know. What if it was Poppy that came to visit her? Like, but again, what does it have to do with Bunny? <laughs> like, why would she kill her? Like, I, I just, I feel like there's all kinds of things I could have potentially figured out, and I don't know what to do with it. Um, so... I have in my notes here, I, I put these questions on, I'm like, what is that? What, why would Poppy be bugging Rose? <laughs> Could she be the product maybe of, no, that doesn't work. I was going to say Charles' father and Rose, but she'd be way older. Um, so, and then another question I have. So we learned early on that Charles' father was having an affair with both, uh, Leonora Folger and Rose Cooper, the artist. But now we found out that Rose Cooper, uh, Shirley MacLaine's character, is Rose Cooper, who was pretending to be Leonora Folger. Did he have an affair with the real Leonora Folger and Rose Cooper? Or was the idea that he had an affair with Rose Cooper, I mean, with, with Leonora Folger under the pretense that they thought it was Leonora Folger, but it was really, there isn't, like, it was never Leonora Folger. Because I, I like, she's the one who said it, right? Shirley MacLaine's character, Rose, she's the one who was like, oh, he had an affair with both of them. When it was, when both people are her. <laughs> so it's like, did he just have an affair with her? Or did he have an affair with both? And if he had an affair with both, could Poppy be, I'm sorry, if he had, if he had an affair with both, if he actually had an affair with Leonora Folger, could Bunny be his illegitimate daughter? And if so, why would anyone kill her? <laughs> I can't figure out why anybody would kill Bunny. Like, I feel like I figured out all these things. I just don't know. Um, 
I think there's some sort, I think whatever resentment, because Charles is being set up clearly, well, they all are, but I think mainly Charles, because all the stuff's been put in his apartment. Whoever this is has it out for Charles. Kreps has no motivation to have it out for Charles. I don't think Cindy Canning has any motivation to have it out for Charles specifically. So whoever has it out for Charles will probably be resentful of his relationship with his father. And that person is probably also like, that was my father too. And Charles hogged them all up. But what does that have to do with Bunny? <laughs> Why would anybody kill him? I, I, that's like I said, I can't figure this out, man. It is kind of bugging me. I'm gonna, I'm really gonna be really curious to see if, if whoever this was, if clues were in the show where I could have figured this out, and I just didn't. But who could be? Why would they? If, if so, this person would theoretically be a. Uh, ha well, if Bunny is an illegitimate child of Charles' father and uh, Leonora, her mother, that would make her Charles' half-sister. Who would come along and resent... Well, Bunny would, I would think, maybe. Like, Bunny would maybe resent Charles, but she wouldn't kill herself and... <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, who would else? Who else would resent that relationship, and and kill Bunny for it, and set up Charles? What did Charles do to anybody? And why would Bunny be? I'm gonna stop vocalizing my lack of understanding of Pop Bunny's involvement, and I'm just gonna keep moving. I'm I'm, I'm kind of getting to a place where I'm gonna assume there's no way I'm gonna guess this, and I'll just find out next week. <laughs> um, let's see what else did I have. Um, let's see. I already asked that. Rose said that she ran off to avoid an abusive relationship. We also saw Charles' father early on, episode one or two, getting arrested, coming out of one of the places that he was having, uh, well, I think, I'm assuming he's coming out of the Arconia, with whoever it was that he was having an affair with. Do you think that after hearing Rose talk about Charles' father and about being in an abusive relationship, if Charles' father got arrested for killing Rose's husband, in which case would the... No, that ain't got nothing to do with Bunny. <laughs> I almost feel like all my theories make sense if Charles was dead, but none of it doesn't make sense if Bunny's dead. Um, but yeah, I wonder if that's a question too. I wonder if that's a factor. If Charles killed... Rose's original husband or beat him up or whatever. That's the reason why he got arrested. Why, what relationship to that does Bunny have? Because I could look at it and be like, okay, that's why somebody would set up Charles for Bunny's murder. Or what if Bunny doesn't even matter? What if it wasn't, what if Bunny wasn't killed for the purpose of, uh, for something that Bunny did and it could have been anybody who got killed, and the goal is merely to set up Charles for the murder, and it ain't got nothing to do with Bunny. I, I don't know. Maybe it was a crime of passion. Maybe Bunny saw uh, whoever this was texting, get out of the building. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm fresh out of ideas at this point. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> I have a, a whole bunch of questions. Of, what does this have to do with Bunny? <laughs> and then we also got to remember the... And, well... I put in here that we need to remember the, the sneezing and we need to remember like how whenever Bunny got killed, the person had on rubber gloves. We need to remember all, like all the other clues, like the person was at the, um, the person met with Bunny at this restaurant. The person got the matches. How does any of this stuff factor in? Or are these red herrings that are meant to make me get on camera and go, we got to focus on this. It might be this person yeah, based on this evidence when in reality, None of that has to do with anything. These are all red herrings. And whatever the murder is has to do with whatever connection I'm trying to make right now. So all that to say, all I really did was just pose a whole lot of fucking questions and provide very little answers, a whole bunch of theories, and said that I don't know what this has to do with Bunny a million times. So sorry if you stuck with me for 20 minutes because I don't think I've helped you understand this episode at all. Not Well, not understand the episode, but understand at least where this show might be going with who might, who might have did this. But one last thought before I wrap up. Um, I thought the art in this episode was beautiful. I love the uh, the painting on the puzzle 
that Alice gave Mabel. And speaking of which, what is Alice's point? Like, why is she even here? Like, in that scene, I could see uh, the puzzle working for Mabel. Because the whole idea, because she was saying, like, it's like there's a piece that's missing. And she used to put puzzles with the picture side down. And, like, like she's a puzzle expert figuring, figuring out puzzles. Uh, and she even verbalizes, like, there's a missing piece when she's talking to Poppy. So I get how the paint giving her that puzzle painting helped Mabel in this episode. But overall, what is Alice's purpose? I can't even figure out how she'd be connected to this anymore. And again, I'm wondering, because they mentioned something about that one episode where it was like, uh, do you know anybody who uh, just came into your life and he was trying to, to trying to fit in? And then Mabel something like, yes, like this isn't that. What if Alice and all of that was, again, just another red herring? I'm going to be really curious, because now that I've done these videos, this shit's going to stick with me a little bit better, and I'm going to remember these details. So at the end of the finale, now I can look back and go, this matter, this matter, this matter, this, or this didn't matter, this matter. And then I can kind of use that going into season three. Be like, yeah, 80% of the clues they gave us in season two were red herring. So maybe I should look at this a little differently. But I thought the painting on the puzzle was great. And I thought the painting of Charles and his father that was underneath the original painting was beautiful as well. So really great work there by whoever actually painted that. Uh, so that's all I got. I will see you guys next week for the finale. And until then, peace.